Hey friends, Matt aka Martin here, and in this video, I want to share with you a collection of 12 little utility racks that I've put together for Ableton Live to help me with my workflow. I wanted to share these racks with you, show you what they do, why I use them, and why they're useful. And if you want to grab them for yourself, there'll be a link down in the description where you can head over to my Buy Me a Coffee page and get them for yourself. But without any further ado, let me show you all these 12 racks, why I like them, and some different use cases for them as well. Okay, so here on the left over in the browser, you can see all the different racks that we're going to be going through. There's a few different split racks and there's a bunch of other racks here. And we're gonna start with probably my most used one, which is the channel strip. So here on track one, I have a vocal loaded up, which sounds like this. There's a sweet, sweet feel to your energy. There's a calming sound in your melody. And I'm gonna load up Martin's channel strip. And you can see here, this is just a really simple rack with eight basic controls that kind of mimic the controls you might find on a channel strip of some kind of mixing console or something like that. We have a really simple trim control, which allows us to just control the input volume going into the channel strip. There's a sweet, sweet feel to your energy. There's a calming sound in your melody. There is a high pass filter. There's a sweet, sweet feel. Which goes all the way up to 500 energy. hertz. There's a calming sound. There's a one knob compressor here, which allows us to just apply some really generalized compression to the signal with a single knob. There's a sweet, sweet feel to your energy. There's a calming sound in your melody. And I find this really useful if I just want some simple dynamic control over something, I'll just bump this up to where it sounds good. And then if I want to apply compression later on down the line, I'll apply some more precise compression. Then I have a three band EQ, which is just using Ableton Live's channel EQ. I've got a low gain, a mid gain with a mid frequency and a high gain, which again, just allows me to apply some really broad EQ to the signal. There's a sweet, sweet feel to your energy. There's a calming sound in your melody. Promise me you'll always remember me. And then last but not least, we have a drive control here, which is just controlling a saturator at the end of the chain with a soft clip to kind of give it some more analog characteristic. I use saturator a lot, so I figured this was a great way to just implement this into my workflow. There's the ability to kind of go down in gain here, just in case the compressor brings up the level too much, or you can drive the signal even more to apply some further distortion. There's a sweet, sweet feel to your energy. There's a calming sound in your melody. And this is a really great way to just add some extra saturation to the signal. And you're not gonna have anything going over zero if you use this drive control. And in fact, this is always turned on. So even if you've got a signal going in really hot into this channel strip, it's just gonna clip it off at zero, which is why we also have this trim control here. I actually have this channel strip loaded up as default on all my audio and MIDI tracks. I find it really useful, especially if I'm using my Ableton push. It just gives me really quick access to all of these kind of core major parameters that you might use on pretty much every single track as a broad strokes solution. So the next racks that I'm gonna go through are the split racks, which you can see there are four of here. There's a two band split, three band split, mid side split, and a stereo split, which just allows us to split the signal into different components, whether that's by frequency or by stereo or kind of left right positioning. Firstly, we've got two and three band frequency splits, which allows us to split a signal into multiple frequency bands. So here we've got a drum sound, which is just a little loop that sounds like this. I'm gonna load up the two band split, which just allows me to affect the low frequencies and the high frequencies differently with different audio effects. So for instance, if I wanted to go to the high frequencies and play some kind of an audio effect, like maybe a saturator on just these high frequencies, I could do that here and just apply some drive and saturation to the high frequencies. <laughs> and I can control the crossover between the low frequencies and the high frequencies with this crossover control. And the other one is just a three band split, which does basically exactly the same thing, except we get a low, mid and a high band. So you can see we've got lows, mids and highs, and we've got the ability to change the split between or the crossover between the low and the mids and the crossover between the mids and the highs. So once again, I could apply some saturation, say to just the mid band, drive the mids,
change the crossovers. And it just allows me to affect these different frequency bands in different ways if I want to do some interesting sound design or if I really want to just focus in on a specific frequency range. The next two split racks we have are a mid side split and a left right or a stereo split. So the mid side split, which looks like this, allows us to apply different processing to the mid signal and the side signal. The mid signal being everything that is the same between both the left and the right speakers and the side signal being everything that is different between both the left and the right speakers. So as an example, if I solo the mid chain here, this is the mids from this drum break. And if I solo the side chain, now we're hearing everything that's different between the left and the right speakers, so it sounds quite wide. And again, you'll see we have this little drop effects here rack in both the side and the mid chains, which is just an easy way of knowing where I can put the effects so that I don't muck with the splits. So let's say I wanted to just add some EQ to the side signal. I might use a channel EQ, pop this into the drop effects here, and maybe I could apply some high frequency boost just to the side signal. and I could reduce the lows from the side signal. And the way I've got this set up, it's good to apply things like compression as well, but you can apply anything in either the side or the mid channel to just affect those different parts of the signal differently. The stereo split does exactly the same thing, except instead of splitting the mid and the side channels, it splits the left and the right channels so you can process them independently. Here I've got this Foley Chaos percussion, which sounds like this. which has a very different left signal and right signal. So if I wanted to affect them differently, I could pull on this stereo split and then I could apply some processing to say the left in the form of potentially, again, an EQ. And I could then apply some processing to the right in the form of maybe a compressor. And this just allows me to affect the right and the left signal differently from one another, which is really useful if you have sounds like this, where they're quite different between the left and the right speaker. So it's really good if you're working with things like loops a lot. Now, speaking of left and right, the next track I'm gonna show is what's called a dual mono compressor, which is a compressor that basically reacts differently to the left signal and the right signal. So for this, I'm gonna show you on the same kind of percussion loop that I was working on before. We're gonna load up Martin's dual mono compressor. And you'll see here, this is basically just all the standard controls of a compressor. We have threshold, ratio, attack, release, knee, peak or RMS, and an output gain. We also have an input gain added, which is just something I thought was missing from Live's basic compressor. Except the way that this works is it applies compression differently to the left signal and the right signal coming in. So for example, if I pull down this threshold, The left signal is receiving its own compression and the right signal is receiving its own compression. These controls are controlling the parameters of the two independent left and right compressors, but this is just a really good way of if you've got kind of overly dynamic and stereo sounds like this particular loop, you can apply a dual mono compressor to really control the left and right signal independently from one another so that say if the right signal gets really loud, it's not affecting the left signal and vice versa. And following on from this, I just have a stock standard compressor rack, which is just a basic stereo compressor with the addition of the input gain here, which is something that I just thought was missing from the stock Ableton Live compressor. So I wanted a rack that just contained that input gain there as well, because I find it's really useful to be able to control the level going into a compressor, of course, as well as the level going out of the compressor. The next rack is a really simple dual filter rack. And this is basically just a high pass and a low pass filter in a single rack. I use both of them all the time. So I figured why not just put them in the same rack and we get the ability here to turn on or off the filters independently from one another and then just control the frequency, resonance and slope of each of the filters, slope going between 12 dB per octave and 24 dB per octave. So as an example here, I've got this synth sound, which sounds like this. And if I just engage the high pass, I can now get control over a high pass filter.
and I can also control a low pass filter if I turn that on. And this is of course really good if you just want to apply some filter sweeps to a signal and maybe you want to apply both a high pass and a low pass or you're not sure if you want a high pass or a low pass, you get the ability to just control a high pass and a low pass independently from one another. The next one I'm going to show is super simple and it's not something you're going to be able to hear the effect of, but it's a polarity inversion rack. And this is just a simple rack that allows you to either have the normal polarity or invert the polarity just with these two macro variations here. It just provides a really easy way to invert the polarity if you want to do it for some reason. There's a lot of reasons why you might want to invert the polarity of a signal. And currently it's a little bit annoying having to import a utility and then click on both the inversion of the left and the right and it just kind of is a little bit cumbersome so I decided that I just put together a little rack that just does it for you with a simple click of a button or a move of a dial. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, I'd love to invite you to leave a like down below, subscribe if you're new, and if you're really enjoying my content, why not consider heading on over to my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can support me by buying me a coffee, downloading some cool things from my shop, like all the racks I'm showing in this video, or becoming a member to support me on a monthly basis. There's a link down in the description. Now, the next three racks are a little bit more specialized, the first of which is a hard clipper. So we're going to go back to this drums track track and I'm going to insert Martin's hard clipper and you can see there's four controls right here. The first one is a stereo slash L input. The second one is a R input. Third one is a link slash unlink, which is a stereo link or unlink. And the last one is an output control. And all this is, is Ableton Live's saturator on the digital clip mode. But I have the ability to, of course, have it as stereo and I can control the input drive and output gain. Or like with the dual mono compressor, I can have it to affect both the left and the right signal independently of one another, which again is really useful if I'm on signals like this particular one. So let's add Martillon's hard clipper to this and turn it to unlinked. So we now have an independent hard clipper for the left signal and the right signal. And the output control both. So this is really good, again, if you've got really varying degrees of dynamics in both the left and the right signal, as we do with this particular loop right here. Having control over the clipping of the left and right channels independently from one another can help you apply clipping in a more precise and strategic way way. Of course, if your signal is pretty similar in terms of the left and right content, you can always just have it linked instead. But if you want to have the ability to unlink it, you can, which is why I really like this implementation of a hard clipper. It's not the best clipper in the world because it's just Ableton Live stock standard saturator, but it does a decent enough job for kind of standard creative clipping purposes. The next is a tilt EQ. And what this allows me to do is just kind of tilt the frequency spectrum towards the high frequencies or towards the low frequencies around a set center frequency. So here, if I add Martin's tilt EQ onto these drums, you can see we have a crossover, a tilt percentage, a pinch and an output. So if I play this on the drums and increase the tilt, you can hear we're losing the low frequencies and gaining high frequencies. Or on the opposite side of the spectrum, I can turn this down and kind of make them sound more dull. And then I can choose the frequency crossover. So if I want this to just affect frequencies that are quite high instead, we can turn this up to maybe 5K. Or maybe I want it to affect a much broader range so I can pull it down a little bit to say kind of 200 boost everything above 200. And the pinch is a bit more of a creative control that allows kind of a boost of that crossover frequency. You can think of it as kind of like the resonance of a filter. And then of course the output just allows us to control the output gain because this can get pretty loud if we're tilting at extreme values. I find this a super useful utility tool, which is why I have it in this little toolbox. Last but not least is a little stereo enhancement rack, which I've kind of modeled off of Polyverse's wider, and it just allows you to add some stereo width to a signal. So here I've got Martin's wider, and you can see there are four controls, width, tone, side level, and gain. 
the width allows you to just add some stereo width to any signal, even if it's a mono signal. These vocals, for example, are completely mono. There's no side information. So if I play this, there's a sweet, sweet it's coming just out of the center. And if I increase the width control, we can add some stereo width to this signal. There's a sweet, sweet feel to your energy. There's a calming sound in your melody. And the way I've achieved this is through comb filters, but that can add some interesting tonal shaping or timbral change to the side signals. So I have this little tone control here, which just allows you to control the positioning of these comb filters to kind of get it sounding the best it possibly can for whatever signal you're running through it. There's a sweet, sweet feel to your energy. There's a calming sound in... It also allows you to balance the left and the right a little bit better. And then we have a side level, which just allows you to increase the level of the side signal if you want extra width. There's a sweet, sweet feel to your energy. And then, of course, an output gain, which just allows you to turn down the output if it gets a little bit too loud, which it probably will. There's a sweet, sweet feel to your energy. There's a calming sound in your melody. So without the wider... There's a sweet, sweet and feel with the to your energy. There's a calming sound in your... And this is a completely mono-compatible stereo width enhancement. We're not losing any of the mid or mono signal in the process of doing this. It's basically like poly versus wider, and uh, I really actually quite like it. And so that is a breakdown of 12 little utility racks that I've put together for myself. In fact, I'll probably update this over time as well. And if you want to grab these for yourself, there's a link down in the description below. And if there's enough demand, I might even make a little video going through some of these and how I made them, such as maybe like the wider rack or something like that. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something and I'll see you all in the next video.